my temperament is such that when things seem easy, uh, I distrust it, you know. Uh, with every book, uh, I push myself. I push myself very hard, you know. Uh, when I finished Sea of Poppies, I thought it was impossibly difficult. It just seemed very, very challenging and I really had to push myself hard. But then River of Smoke was even more so, even more challenging, and, you know. Uh, it, and it took uh, an enormous effort, you know, I had to literally give it my all. I would be uh, a little embarrassed to sort of easily accept that, you know, the real turning point of uh, what's happening is just just because of the God of small things. I think there's a whole lot of things that that are happening at this time. And I mean, surely the God of small things is a part of it, you know. But uh, how did I come to write it? Um, just in the way uh, writers do, you know, just uh, I just decided <coughs> that uh, it was something that, that I had, you know, had wanted to do, I think more subconsciously than consciously for a long time. The Indian novel has changed, in the Indian novel in English has changed uh, from Rushdie's time, uh, from the time of Midnight's Children until uh, today's. Uh, today's time, and I think Midnight Children and Rushdeep, he immediately had a different attitude. I certainly do believe that, certainly do believe that uh, Salman Rushdie's talent and Midnight Children's uh, startling difference from what had gone before uh, began to make Indian literature what it is in the world today. Rushdie did was to bring back into English fiction that kind of picaresque, rumbustious um, scale which we had seen in the 18th century but which had gradually petered out post Dickens. Uh, so I do think he's quite historically important writer. Whether those who've come after him will recognize, be recognized in time as having the same historical importance, I frankly rather doubt. I've only written three novels in a collection of short stories. The bulk of my books are in fact non-fiction. But my three novels, I suppose, um, place me more in the camp of the literary novelist than of the mass market novelist. I'm proud that my first novel, The Great Indian Novel, is today in 2010 in its 33rd edition. There's been a vacuum here, I think, in British literature for the past 20 years. And actually into that space has poured um, the Indian novel. First with Salman, hugely important book. But I think perhaps, funnily enough, the second wave of that was started by Arundhati Roy, her novel God of Small Things. And of course, what was important about Arundhati, I mean, lots of things are important about Arundhati's book. But one, of course, she lived in Delhi. And Salman, by that time, was living here. Possibly, to me, the division is pre-God of Small Things and post-God of Small Things in terms of the way the world perceived Indian fiction. Arundhati Roy and God of Small Things said, it is done. It has been done by somebody living in India, writing out of India, with no great uh, sort of pedigree of uh, connections across the globe things that fiction can do is to bring you uh, it can take it can bring you the news but it can also take you into a world that you know nothing about and one of the great things fiction can do is that and India of course is an extraordinarily large various country um, with an enormous number of um, you know different aspects to it all of which to some degree are, are fascinating and interesting and so for British readers and I guess the same is true for Spanish readers, Italian readers, American readers, there is something uh, sort of wonderful about, about visiting in fiction a place that you may never actually visit in. I call myself an accidental writer. When I was writing it I knew that I was onto a good thing in the sense I knew that the plot was fresh and the narrative structure was unique because I was trying to reveal the private life of my protagonist through the public spectacle of a quiz show. But still, I thought what I had written was a very Indian novel, a novel which did not uh, try to exoticize India. And I thought this would be something which only Indian readers would be able to relate to. So it has come as a pleasant surprise to me that readers in so many different countries have been able to relate to my novel incredible and imposing 
uh, tradition of uh, narrative and storytelling, which has been going on for you know close to five thousand years in India, and which is slowly coming into uh, coming into the West. India is a microcosm of the world. The world is changing so fast, and India within itself contains several of the last centuries. And uh, it is also a window into the future. The world's readers are today looking at India as a literary powerhouse. And this is only when we are talking of Indian writing in English. Uh, the, the Indian writing in other language is still relatively unexplored. And I wonder what will happen when all that comes out into English through translation and, and you have a really big explosion. What's happened is that I think we have found our confidence in our language and, and what's happening is this kind of explosion with literature and um, I feel in a way that we have taken that uh, language of English and made it our own. Now there's an interest in Indian culture. Yes, there is. There is and more people are writing about it. So, but there is a more greater interest in things Indian, you know, it's, and this is just an aspect of it. Well, you know, curiously, culture, I believe culture always rides on the tail coat of economic efflorescence. So a lot of this acceptance of Indian culture and, and by extension Indian writing has to do with the fact that we are becoming economically a very, very significant power in the world. Today, the Indian voice, and not only necessarily in English, but people are equally interested, I think, in translations that are coming out of all kinds of languages across the length and breadth of India. It's a combination of, um, of the traditional strengths of Indian writers and the increasing awareness of uh, foreigners of India. The, the writing is sort of going back to India, uh, by which I mean that writers are writing in India and they're not necessarily writing for an audience. As Indians, we have so many stories to tell. We have families with a whole lot of turmoil going on inside them. We also have uh, so many states with their own peculiarities and their own little nuances and details which are today appealing so much to the Western audience. Writing in a more Indian way. Now, of course, the fact that we write in a more Indian way, uh, less self-consciously, let's say, has an effect also on the diaspora. Uh, 